Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, Minister of State for Petroleum orders PPMC and PPRA to ensure adequate supply of fuel during Christmas and New Year. Lagos State PDP gives ultimatum to one of the contenders for the Kogi State governorship ticket, James Falike, to declare his state of origin. Court of Appeals sacks Delta State Senator Yehoya Mori of the People's Democratic Party. And two former Congolese militia leaders transferred from the Netherlands to a prison in the Democratic Republic of Congo. begin tonight with the directive given by the Minister of State for Petroleum, Dr. Ibe Kachuku, to the PPMC and the PPRA to make petroleum products available countrywide for the Yuletide and New Year celebrations. In a supply intervention mechanism, Dr. Kachuku told the agencies to ensure that petroleum products penetrate the nukes and crannies of the country. The minister ordered that daily fuel must be loaded out of locations to Abuja, Kaduna, Lagos, Ibadan and Jos. The minister also said NNPC is consolidating its strategic alliance with some major depot owners and marketers with strong regional logistic outlay in most areas to ensure maximum infiltration of products, especially to the hinterland. He called on the public to refrain from hoarding products diver diversion and panic buying of petrol. More election judgments to continue to roll in as a People's Democratic Party Senator. Ihoyota Amori loses his seat to Omarisi Ovie Omagege of the Labour Party. A court of appeal in the Benin City, the Edo State Capital, nullified the election victory of Senator Amori in the Delta Central Senatorial District. The five man panel, led by Justice Abba Aji, obtained an earlier ruling in favour of Senator Amori and held that Ovie Omagege be sworn in as winner of the election into the upper chamber of the National Assembly. With this appeal court judgment, there are now two PDP senators representing Delta State at the National Assembly. Mr. Omar Gigay was former secretary to the Delta State government and a chieftain of the PDP until his defection from the party. May not be the best of times for the running mates of the late Prince Abubakar Audu in the Kogi governorship election, Honorable James Faleke. This time, the pressure is on him, not from within the party, but from the opposition, the People's Democratic Party. And interestingly, it is not in Kogi State where he ran for election as a deputy governor, but in Lagos State where he currently stands as a member of the House of Representatives. The PDP is asking the leadership of the House to exhibit non-partisanship by stating if Honorable Faleke is still a member of the lower chamber. The chairman of the party, Mr. Twinji Shele, in a statement today, describes Mr. Faleke's status in the House as that of a usurper. The PDP says this is because since Faleke ran for election in Kogi state, he must have transferred his voting unit to Kogi, making him ineligible to represent Ikeja of Lagos State in the House of Representatives. The PDP has demanded that Honorable Faleke must not continue to represent Ikeja constituency because he presently has his voting unit relocated to Kogi State. The party then says it is giving Mr. Faleke a seven-day ultimatum from Monday the 21st to declare his present place of voter registration and for INET to clear the air on the appropriateness of Honorable Faleke interchanging polling units within a scope of less than six months. The PDP, however, threatens that if the demand is not met within the period of this ultimatum, quote, we shall use all means permitted and effective to reclaim the seat for Lagos State. The PDP describes as the, the situation as politically immoral and illegal, claiming it is an open assault on democracy. On January 27, 2016, Alhaji Yahya Bello will be sworn in as the governor of Kogi State and the youngest governor in Nigeria. Before then, some people are still picking holes in his candidature. The governor-elect who says he deserves the position as of what is important is working together to develop the state. Kaba residents in a recent protest in Lokoja, the Kogi state capital. 
These market men and women from Kogi West Senatorial District are demanding that the former APC Deputy Governorship candidate to late Abubakar Audu, James Faleke, replace the late Governor-elect. Given what happened, the death of our candidate Prince Abubakar, it was natural, very, very natural for those around him, his deputy, his children, his political family, to feel a very deep sense of loss. Not just loss in the death of the candidate, but loss because they were on the verge of political relevance, political prominence, appointments, jobs, contracts. So we understand very fully the depth of their grief. But for us as a party, life has to go on. The governor-elect, Alhaji Yahaya Bello, while speaking in Lokoja to Channel's television, insists his emergence is legitimate and he deserves to be governor-elect. My emergence is legal. I don't think I have anything to be afraid of. And um, I did my best to ensure that the party is solid, solidly on ground and become victorious. So anybody that is saying otherwise is uncharitable. Regarding the rumored division in the party, he says it has been sorted out and every member of the party has agreed to work together with him to bring development to the state. The issue of partisan politics will drop it aside, even within the party and even outside the party. So it's a great task that we must achieve. We promise Nigerians, we promise Koki people that we are coming to change it and take it to the highest levels. I personally observed, noted, that my name, of course, was have been submitted to INEC as deputy governorship candidate to peer with Alaji Yaya Bilo. And I told the national chairman clearly in clear words that, Mr. Chairman, I had submitted a letter distancing myself from that decision. And that on no ground will I want to be associated with the decision of the party to peer me with Alaji Yaya Bilo. Because I am already governor-elect. What is more important now is that differences are resolved and the state is moved forward for the good of the people of the state. Vehicular movement here in Lagos has become challenging in recent times because of constant gridlock on major roads. And residents of Lagos, especially those in the Apapa Axis, including Igomu and Surulere, are the most affected as a result of long queues of petrol tankers waiting to get products from the various tank farms in Apapa. Our correspondent Chris Lems visited the area and now reports. This is Costain area of Lagos and it's a total lockdown for commuters hoping to get to their destinations. As it stands, no one is going anywhere except on foot. This has become the fate of Lagosians who have one form of activities or the other around this area and now they are no longer at ease. Normally it takes me 10-15 minutes to get, go to work, but now it's becoming, I've been on the traffic for hours. I had to come down and then take, trek it so that I can actually get to uh, seven where I'm going to. I'm right away trekking from Orile to this junction and I'm still going to a bit better. This is not the issue of the federal government. This is the issue of the state government. We have not even go half of the coast going to Pejora uh, to for more than one hour and then now. We don't, nobody knows the problem. Buses are available. Passengers board it, but to make a mile takes a while, and the drivers express their plights. Commuters, I mean, we are suffering. We, we, find we cannot even to make, I mean, to, I mean, to make the delivery of the, the tokens of take of our, our farm. Because when you come down, you go, you go, once you come in, you just waste the whole day in the traffic. Me, myself, and I want to just go to my house and just go and, you know, but the train just walk, it just, I don't, I, in fact, I don't know. The only explanation to this travail comes from a transporter who says depot owners are culpable. Every depot has to call exactly the numbers they're supposed to load per, per day. You, see, you can see that some trucks used to come in even without loading, loading meter ticket with them, with them. So only those that have meter ticket with them are supposed to come through, to come in, I mean. Then these uh, containers, 
they are also another problem. Some of them, they are not loading. They are bringing in empty containers to discharge. And at the same time, they are expecting to load. But sometimes, there are no loading on the ground. But still, they must come in. Lagos State Government, which seems as helpless as all other citizens, takes the blame to the federal government. It's not a problem of Lagos State. It's a problem of federal. The generator of these tankers we are talking about, this freight, is Nigerian Port Authority. It's not under Lagos State. We have limited control on that. Number two is that also the, the rail, efficiency of the rail, is not on, also under the control of Lagos State. These are the issues that we are talking to the federal government about. While commerce and other economic activities are at a standstill, the health and financial implication of having the Goshen's face this monster for gridlock daily cannot be underestimated. This makes a quick resolution to this menace highly desirable. Chris Elams, Channels Television News. Lagos traffic, I know what that feels like. In part two after the break, a review of the death sentence on some soldiers plus the Boko Haram December deadline. I'll be joined in a moment by retired Brigadier General Olusegun Ajana. Please stay with us.